Wow, what a nice day. What a really nice day. And if it wasn't for all the trains going by, it seems like every 10 minutes in the background, it'd be a really even better day. But I guess I can live with that. It's a really nice area, but I didn't notice all the trains before I started trying to do a review. Anyways, it's just the way it is. All right, today I'm gonna to be reviewing this. This is the SE Gibson Axe. Okay, this is a this is 10, 10 inches overall length. It has just under a three inch cutting blade. It has a black oxide finish. It is 1095 high carbon steel. It has a textured micarta handle. It somewhat represents a, a napped flint pattern. Very textured. Uh, it's gonna be one of those love it or hate it kind of things. Now I've had this for just under, just under a year and a half. So I've used this quite a bit actually. Uh, I originally picked this up to make some sheaths for it as a request. And I really wasn't sold on it looking at it, but I did some research on it and watched some videos on the guy that actually designed this and it piqued my interest quite a bit. And um, I will say that there might be a little bit of bias in this video. I'm just warning you guys up front that I, I actually really enjoy this. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite purchases from last year um, or year before last, I guess now. Uh, I really do enjoy this. So, will be a little bit of bias, but I'm going to show you how I use it. And again, like I say in most of my videos, I'm not trying to sell you guys on anything. I don't sell these. I didn't make this. I didn't design it. So, this is just my experiences for those of you who are looking to purchase this and maybe you want to see it in action because that's what I'm going to show you. I'll save most of the chit chat and blah 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 for the end of the video. I will talk a little bit more in depth, um, a little bit more of my thoughts because I do have some on this. But for the most part, we're going to get to work and do a little bit of what I normally use this for and I'll show you how it performs. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of controversy behind something this small, whether or not it's going to be useful for you and I can't make that decision for you. You know, like I said, I'm not trying to sell anybody on anything. It does come with a nice leather sheath that is also made in the USA and this does have a lifetime warranty that is uh, SE's warranty is very good no BS warranty you break it they get you a new one so all right let's go do a little bit of work I know this is something a lot of people do. A simple tent stake. 
but for me it's actually something that I use quite often with my little bug out which I'll show you in a second one of the nice things about this is this little ramp right here it's real nice for pushing with your thumb All right, so what we did was we processed down this stick and we made a little simple tent stake. And we didn't do that for no, for no reason. One, we were testing the ax, but also I carry the Seek Outside little bug out. And more often than not, I carry no pole with that and I make some of the stakes that I use to set that up. So I'll show you how I use these. This is a very good shelter. I've had it for quite a while. It's very lightweight and it's worked out for me over the years. So that's the center pole and this is the ground stake. Hopefully we can see that. Now, of course this axe doesn't have a big hammer pull on it, but for this, we can just use the flat side. Excellent. This axe has a very weighty and satisfying balance and really seems to have a way of biting into wood that defies its size. I really enjoy using it. The design of this axe was very purposeful. This was not a random let the intern have a go axe design. Uh, rather than retell the design theory behind this, in the description I'll link to the interviews of the designer and you can watch those if you're interested. One of the things I really like are the multitude of handholds that you can use with this thing. So if you do enjoy using a small ax in the ways you can use a knife, you can definitely do that with this. All right, now I've said in quite a few of my videos. I don't consider myself a bushcrafter and I'm definitely not a wood carver. Uh, here, here's a, but here's a couple of the things that I have carved. This is a spoon. I've carved several of these. I have a little template that I use. So, and then here's a spatula. Now I did this completely with nothing but the, the Gibson axe. And I'm actually pretty proud of this one. It's got a little, little recurve here. And it turned out pretty well. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one. So, just to show, like I said, I'm not a, a wood carver. But sometimes when you're camping in the winter, you've got a lot of time. And even sometimes when, when I'm hunting, if I'm not just dog tired in the evenings, you've got a lot of time to kill. And sometimes in the summer, when, it, when I'm sitting on my back porch barbecuing, it's nice to just kind of relax. really hard to do this and try and film it at the same time and I am not an expert carver with the head shape the way it is you can really get in here and get some material removed 
I don't I don't want to go too deep into this because I'm probably already losing a lot of people. All right, I'll be honest. We're at, we are at the wood processing portion of the test, and I normally don't use this to process large amounts of wood. I normally use this to feed my stick stoves when I'm out bumming around, and I will use this to process kindling. I normally will not use it to process large amounts of stuff like this, but we'll see what happens. Now I have a, a pretty nasty piece of wood here with some large knots in it, and let's just see how it does. Now the reason why this doesn't have handle scales all the way up here is so that you can baton it through without breaking the handle scales. All right, let's see how this does. I don't think I've ever actually tried to do anything like this. I have no idea how this is going to work. Uh, I'm going to get my axe stuck. I'm going to do something a little different here. If I can work with my split, and we'll go from this end too. Because it's not a blade like a knife, we can't baton on the other side. So we will try from this end. So, just got a little bit that doesn't want to go. Yeah, we got it. So it is definitely possible. Well, we're all but there. That is some gnarly stuff. It's definitely possible. Not something I'd want to do a lot of, but it, you can definitely do it. Beefy little tool. All right, let's say you were gonna do a little camp cooking and for whatever reason, you uh, lost your knife. So let's chop up some, some veggies. Not terrible. I'm not a professional chef. It may look like it, but I'm not. A little bit of jalapeno. Actually, all I had left. What's for lunch today? Well, we're gonna do a little spin on ramen, one of my favorite leftover dishes. We're gonna take the veggies that we chopped up. We've got some hoisin sauce, some sriracha sauce, some garlic chili paste, some leftover barbecued chicken, and some of my favorite ramen noodles. And that's what we're having. So I've got my water up to a boil we we'll get these noodles on there, and hopefully we'll get this cooked up before the wind gets going too bad. Yeah, these are the good ones. And I don't like using too much of the seasoning packets, that's why I bring my own sauces. Anything goes good in this. Uh, pork chop, chicken, any kind of leftover meat, a couple of eggs, and you can even put greens in there. Cilantro, basil, anything out of your garden, zucchini. And if you're out camping, you can put uh, wild edibles in there. Stinging nettle goes good, anything like that. 
that's definitely boiling. Oh yeah, it's going real nice. We'll add in these vegetables, mushrooms, jalapenos, lots of onion. Hoisin sauce, our hot sauce, our garlic chili paste, not too much. How's that look? Alright, soup's done. Mmm, smells good. I think we're gonna take this little bit of lime. I'm gonna squeeze that in there. I like to just throw the whole thing in there, mix that up. And then what I like to do, what how I was shown, got our hot sauce here, our sriracha. This is a like a fermented hot sauce and our hoisin. You can use oyster sauce if you like. A little bit of that on there. A little bit of your meat. Ooh. Do a little bit of this taste test here. See how this is. Mmm. Pretty hot. Not spicy hot, just hot. Mmm. It's really good. I'm gonna eat my lunch. I got some charcoal on my face, I think. Yep, pine pitch. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to eat my lunch and then we will wrap up this review. Mm, really hungry. Let's try and finish this up. I apologize, it seems like we're bouncing around a little bit. The camera battery keeps dying. It just does not hold the charge. I came down here by the truck so I could charge it up and get this finished up. I'm gonna make it through this staying review. <laughs> All right, so final thoughts on this Gibson Axe. Um, I already told you in the beginning, I'm a little biased, I actually really like it. It's a hit or miss, I think for some people, on the handle scales. Myself personally, uh, I actually really like it. It's a very tactile feeling and for me personally, I have a little bit of um, loss of feeling in my hands. So to me, I actually really like it and I didn't think I would. In fact, I liked it so much so that I bought a knife. The, this is the PR4 in the same grip texture. And I actually like the design of the ax and I appreciate the design and the handle texture enough to where I actually had Mr. Gibson, uh, I had him, I bought one of his custom made knives. So that should tell you where I sit on whether or not I like the axe, okay? Not to be too big of a fanboy or anything like that. Um, it, I've used this paired with a large axe, just like you would pair, you know, a hatchet with an axe, 
When I'm out camping, I use this inside my hot tent, like I said, just put kindling and do small tasks and then use the larger axe to process down the wood. And quite often what I do with this is I carry it in my waste pack as a primary chopping tool. This is the Hill People gear. This is the this is the Hill People gear waste pack and I carry it on the little side deal there. And or uh, you can carry it in a backpack, you can carry it in a haversack, whatever you want. But I will carry it as my primary processing tool with a small saw, two of my favorites here, and a small knife like the Etsy CR 2.5, which I just picked up, or something like this LT Wright small workhorse. It's a good little knife, I just picked this up. Also, been testing that. So yeah, I like it really well. Works good for what I use it for. Like I said, I'm not a huge bush crafter, not a huge carver, but I do a little bit of those. And I don't carry a large belt knife, so this kind of, for me, fills in for a lot of the tasks that people do uh, use a large belt knife for, for those tasks. So this kind of fills in those roles. Anybody that's followed my channel for any length of time knows that I, I like axes, small axes and tomahawks, and I use those quite a bit for general camp tasks and things like that. So this is just a natural for me. All right. And in the last couple of years, I've actually been uh, appreciating smaller handled axes a little bit more. Not to say that larger axes don't play their part, but for me, in some of the areas that I go, uh, the trees don't get, they don't get, uh, five feet tall. I mean, it's the scablands and there's just not much out there. So uh, even this is kind of overkill sometimes, but I do enjoy it. I don't really have much else. Hopefully I've covered enough for anybody interested in that ax to be able to see that it can do quite a bit of work and help, help them make a good decision. All right, any relevant links will be in the description. So if you need to check something out or whatever, uh, if you do go somewhere to pick something up, do me a favor. Uh, tell them where you saw and where you got the information. That really helped me out as a channel. And like I said, uh, this channel, or th this, this was brought or funded by the sale of the sheets. So uh, keep that in mind. And with that, guys, leave a comment, leave a suggestion. Constructive criticism is always welcome. That's how we learn. And until next time, stay safe.